Hello there, welcome back. For those of you that care about these sorts of things, this is the proof of the distance formula. All right, here we are given two coordinates. Uh, I know it's a little elementary, but sometimes I like to think of these as, let's say, houses. And here I'm asking you how far away is this house from this house, house A and house B. Well, notice that they're actually on the same street. Notice that their Y coordinates are both five. So we can say that they're both on the same street. So you just want to know how far away it is horizontally. Now you can think of the points in between. Let's say there's a point here as, let's say, houses that are in between them or uh, just blocks or any unit of distance. Notice that I could actually just count here. How far away is house A from house B? Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven units away. So we know that there are seven, you know, whatever apart from each other. All right, I'm gonna keep uh, the previous one up. And now we have these two houses. This house is at negative two, three, and this house is at three, three. Well, if I'm trying to count, this is what I would do. One, two, three, four, five. So this one is five units away. Well, there must be an easier way than just counting. Notice that these are horizontal. So if I actually look at the x-axis for both of it, both of these, then if I take x2 and subtract it from x1, then I get 7, which was the distance here. Let's see if it works here when I'm crossing this axis. Here my x2 is 3, and my x1 is negative 2. So 3 minus negative 2, well that's 5. Okay, so a way to get my distance is to subtract, the, in this case, the x-axis, and I get a distance of 5. All right, this time I have these two coordinates, and this time they're vertical. Remember, our vertical coordinate is our y, so let's look at our y's. This is 4, and that's a negative 1. If I was counting, I would do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these two houses are 5 units away from each other. If I was using their coordinates, okay, I can say uh, this is y2 and y1, and I'm going to subtract them. So 4 minus negative 1, 5 units away. So I get the same answer. So we see that by subtracting the proper coordinates that we can get our distance. Let's see how that relates to our distance formula now. All right, remember, you get to choose which one is x1, y1, and which one is x2, y2. So you could run into a problem like this. If you have, let's say, 4 minus negative 1, well, here you're going to get 5. What if you had chosen it the other way, and it was negative 1 minus 4? You're going to get a negative 5. Notice that in distance, there's no such thing as a negative distance. So you actually use the absolute value of whatever's here. So you still get your 5, and a negative distance doesn't make sense. So the absolute value of this is actually just positive 5. All right, here I'm given two different points. Notice now that they're not horizontal or vertical, they're diagonal. So I want to find the distance from here all the way to here. And we'll call that the distance of P1 and P2. But how do I get that? Well, notice that if I'm just thinking of X1 and X2, if I think of them as being in the same horizontal line, the distance here, X2, is the same all throughout here. So I can create a point here that has the same x2. 
when I look at the Y's though, this one, if I'm trying to make it horizontal, will have the same height as this, as Y1. Y1. And by doing that, I'm actually creating a right triangle. Now there's something about right triangles. If I know two sides, the length of two sides, I can find out the third by using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now in this case, I'm going to say that this distance is a, this is b, and this diagonal, my hypotenuse, is my c. All right. To figure out a, the length of this, look at my x's. Isn't that the absolute value of x2 minus x1? Yeah. To figure out this distance, my b, that's the absolute value of now my y's because I'm doing it vertically. y2 minus y1. Now I'm going to go ahead and substitute these things. Right? Sorry, I had to move the a and b up here. I didn't have enough room. But let's see what our substitution looks like. Here's our a, so we'll put that in here. The absolute value of x2 minus x1. And that's supposed to be squared plus the absolute value of now our b, which is y2 minus y1 squared equals c. Now remember, this is our c. Our c is the distance of p1 and p2. And don't forget, that's supposed to be squared also. So, squared. Okay, let's see some of the things we can do. First of all, if in here, if in my a, this comes out to be a positive number, and I square that so that's a positive times a positive, I get a positive number. If in here I get a negative number, it's a negative times a negative, because it's squared, so negative times negative, that's a positive. So I actually don't need my absolute value anymore. I can get rid of that and just have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared equals I still have this which we'll get rid of right now so notice that this distance is squared our c is still squared well to get rid of a square on this side I'm going to take the square root so let's take the square root here that's our c this is what I'm doing square root. Since I did it on the right side, I'll go ahead and do it on the left. And this has to go over everyone. So we have our square root going up over everyone. Our final product looks like this. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared equals the distance of p1 and p2. There. So this should look familiar. That's a distance formula. And here you have your proof. All right. Here's the proof of the midpoint formula. Here we're given two points, p1 and p2 with coordinates x1, y1, and coordinates x2, y2. Now here we're going to say that we're going to choose a point. Here's our point, x, y. And this point, x, y, is made such that it is the same distance from p1 as it is from P2. So distance here and here are exactly the same. All right, now if we create triangles here 
and here okay, we do something special. Okay, notice that we made right triangles. So by making right triangles here, we can actually see that this line and this line are parallel. That makes this line a transversal. Okay. If you've taken some geometry, you'll know that a transversal on two parallel lines creates special things. One of them is corresponding angles. So here we have corresponding angles. We have right angles and therefore this angle and this angle must be the same. So notice that all the angles inside these inside these two triangles are the same and we do have a corresponding side that's the same also. All right, because of that, we have what we call angle side angle. Okay? Angle side angle. That lets us know that these two triangles are congruent, so they're exactly the same. Okay? Let's see how that's going to help us. All right, first, let's go ahead and see how long these sides of our triangle are. Just like before, like in our distance formula that I showed you earlier, to get this length, I would have to do x minus x1. This length would be y from here minus y1. For this triangle, this length would be x2 minus x. I'm using this point. And this length would be y2 minus y. Now it's important that we know that they are congruent. These two triangles are congruent because that means that this and this are congruent. If they're congruent, that means they're the same. So let's put them side by side x minus x1 is equal to x2 minus x. Notice that I have an x on both sides. Let me go ahead and put them together. Plus x plus x. That's 2x minus x1 equals x2. Let me get rid of this. Plus x1. 2x is equal to x2 plus x1. And to get the x by itself, I need to divide it by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and x is equal to 2. Isn't that how you get the x coordinate for the midpoint formula? Yeah. And the same thing happens with the y's. Let's do it real quick. All right, with the y's, I'll do it a little bit quicker. We know that. These two are the same, so I'll set them up side by side. y minus y1 is equal to x2 minus y. Bring it over, that's 2y minus y1 equals y2. Bring that over, 2x is equal to x2 plus y1. Divide by 2, and y is equal to x2 plus y1 over 2. And that is how you get the y coordinate for your midpoint formula. Okay, there you have it, your proof for the midpoint formula. Alright ladies and gentlemen, until next time.